Hey guys, welcome back to the Ask Muso podcast, brought to you by Yellow Music. I'm on location somewhere very special today, somewhere very special to me that I've had the privilege of playing on multiple occasions. I'm at the Precinct, Nambour's new hottest place to play, and I've got 50% of the, uh, of the driving force that makes it happen. So, Rusty, say g'day, introduce yourself and... Say a bit of an Hello. Yes, I'm Rusty and I'm one half of The Precinct. So I own it with my daughter, Cherry, who doesn't like being in the public eye. So she's not here right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, um, we're a mother-daughter and um, we opened this about four months ago. Sweet. So uh, I know there's been other ventures that we've discussed both on and off camera regarding Nambour and the scene and, and things you've, you've tried in the past. How did you come across this space? Uh, in in Nambour and what was the appeal? Well, um, we started at a couple of other spaces that were much larger. Um, Just they weren't the right fit for us. Um, We were actually leasing them and um, just it was just a little bit scary putting money into something that you don't own. So we sort of had to rethink a few things and then um, I just saw this space for sale one day and um, I, I don't know, I can really see things. When I, when I look at something, I can see it almost like when you um, see those videos where it, like, shows a whole lot of stuff being made. Like, do you know what I'm, you know, those things I'm trying to say? And I can see it unfolding in my head, how it could look. And I just could see that this space could work. So everyone said, oh, you're a little bit crazy. Like, well, that's good. All the best people are. <laughs> All the best people yeah. are. No one could see it because it was literally empty. There was nothing. It was just like an old office. Everything that you see in here, we've, we've put together. So... Um, the vision was clearly in my head and um, we ended up being able to buy the space so then we were able to really put our heart and soul into it and make it ours and put put how it was meant to be, it, it came about. So, yeah, we were very lucky to be able to um, buy it in December and then we started straight away and opened in October. When when Dylan from Sailing Space first mentioned it to me, he's like, so it's this place and I looked it up and I was like, this is in amongst like a pathologist and a bunch <laughs> yes. of GPs. I was like, I know we're going to be doing stuff at night. Are we allowed to make noise here? Uh, and I was like, I, I didn't know what it was going to be, a bit of a hole in the wall thing. And, and then just before we played our first show here, Del came in and said he'd spoken to you about something. And he's like, look, it's really nifty and it's got a vibe. And that's going to be my, my next question for you is what would you describe sort of, obviously there'll be media showing what it looks like from our point of view right now, but what would you describe the vibe that you wanted or that you and Cherry wanted the, the place to be? It, it kind of evolved as I was making it, I guess. Um, I always had an Art Deco sort of New York jazz bar, steampunk kind of vibe in my head. But I think it's kind of evolved a little bit. It's a little bit of maybe sea punk, steampunk, Art Deco jazz vibe. Um, right now as we're talking, it's set up for a jazz club tomorrow night. But then, you know, like last week we had rock bands and grunge bands um, we had vinyl DJs and then a couple of weekends before that we had screamo death metal. So it can really change. Yeah, and I, I like that. I think that's that's what just the Sunshine Coast needed as a whole was just somewhere that wasn't going to pigeonhole you, somewhere that you could go, uh, especially if like you can go on your night. Yeah. You know, for me it was very much, I don't know what made me think of this, but when I think of like Greece and it's like on Wednesdays we wear pink, it was like, okay, well on this day we do this. Mm. And rather than it being pigeonholed into one thing or anything like that, it was like, I think, what Triple J originally used to do, which was, you know, Fridays we do this and Wednesdays yeah. we supposed to do this. I just think it's done a bit better because we really do focus on certain things, certain nights. Everyone's welcome, yeah. both from an audience and a playing perspective. And I think that that's been the most exciting thing for me uh, as an artist has been to see that a lot of places say, yeah, we're new, we're keen to do things. Um, but not that, and I don't really like what you're wearing, and I probably wouldn't put oh. you on again. And I'm like, cool. So you'll last six months because it, it's about yeah. it's about being as open as they want to be. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, you, the amount of shows that we've seen that I've played in, and just varieties of things we've put together, and just seeing the place come from, you know, just open to, to mm. where it is now. It's super exciting to know that we have somewhere else on on the list that we can that we can yeah. say to play and that we can bring people to. And the fact that it's now only a, a gentleman six minutes from my house is simply, <laughs> it's simply so a good. bonus. Yeah, it's so good. So what, yeah. uh, what, is, what was your initial dream behind doing this? Was this something you two had spoken about wanting to do together or you wanted a project because you're both musically interested or were you like, no, I would like to do a venue. I want to do a place. Yeah. Well, it's, it actually started when I was a teenager. So um, my best friend and I at the time, we discussed having a bar when we grew up. 
Um, he ended up going to London and successfully running about 50 bars over there. Um, I ended up having kids and successfully raising them, hopefully. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm in the music industry as well. Um, the kid's dad is, was heavily in the music industry mm -hmm. as well. So that with, you know, recording studio at home, I write music myself too. I play the handpan. Um, and then before COVID, I was involved in running um, events up at Noosa and stuff and could just see that it was really um, – there was a huge potential. And what I was finding is that the venue – the particular venue that we were working with were not um, not open to the ideas that I think the community needed. And I just sort of started tick, tick, ticking. My brain goes at a million miles an hour. So I'm like, you know, we need to, I need to realise that dream. You know, you have these dreams when you're young and then as you get older, life happens and you kind of get bogged down and then you forget your dreams. And I was like, you know, you only live once and I don't want to just die not doing something that really made me happy. And... When I look out and see the smiling faces that I see, that's that's my high. Like, and yep. you know, that's why I wanted to do it. And and you know, Cherry was keen, and um, she and I like we're so close, we get on so well. There's never an issue, and um, you know, we never argue. <laughs> it's just brilliant. She has all the qualities that I lack, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we're a really great team. And um, yeah, we decided to go ahead with it and do it. And um, it's sort of like I, I see the precinct as like we've created this baby and we've put the baby down on the ground and now we're letting the baby crawl where it needs to go. And it takes a village to raise a child. So it takes a 100%. community to make this venue what it is. And I think you and I were talking earlier about how the vibe can is totally created by the people on the night, 100%. you know. So um, the space is here for whoever needs it, when they need it. Um, you know, I'll have people say to me, you know, I was just having the worst week at work and, you know, like I was feeling really down and then I came here tonight and I just want to say thank you for putting this on because now I, I feel I can go to work next week and I feel really good. And, Bit of pep. Yeah, yeah and pep that, that's what... Music is such a medicine, man. Like, I... Jay Bischoff, who runs our um, open mic every second Thursday night, he did this really awesome speech the other day and he said, people are always saying, you know, support the artists, support the venue, but I actually feel that the artists support the community because without music, life is shit. Yeah, you <laughs> like, tell me the last movie you watched that you enjoyed being... <laughs> like, silent film is due to the idea of technology at the time, but you try watching an actual film... Try watching the Avengers, but they're just swinging foley in, in between, you know, just swinging plastic swords at each other. Yeah. Music makes everything. Music yeah. is the soundtrack to your life. And yeah. you get to pick which soundtrack you yeah. align with, which one you like the most. And yeah. this is essentially a home for that. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it, it can just totally pick you up if you're down. It can help you through tough times. It It's always there. Like it's, you know, there's a plethora of songs that you can just pick and go you know, hey, this this is going to make me feel like this. And just looking out and seeing people let loose and let go and enjoy. I just love original music and I love seeing people enjoy original music and watching um, all the bands that we've had through. Like we've had so many acts through now since October. It's mind-blowing and, you know, it, it's just great to see everyone just having such a good time and that's why we created it. We didn't do it for any other reason really, to be honest. Exactly. And I think I've seen a lot of things come up uh, venue-wise since I've been on the coast for probably about five years now. And as part of that, I've noted that from the management level, sometimes things have fallen because they're disinterested or they only like what they like or they're just not warm people. And then the community don't back it because they don't believe in it. Yeah. And then obviously if you don't go and see artists, well, then they'll either play for nothing and to no one, they'll play to a room like we are now yeah. or they will essentially just boycott it because I go, no, no, the vibe's not good there and I know none mm. of my friends will come. Yeah. And it, as much as the, it takes a village to raise a baby, you do have, it's not just things, uh, people talking, it's if you know that one part's missing, one big chunk, like the venue loves what they do mm. and the people love what's happening and you don't put on good artists. That's not sustainable. Mm. And if any of the other pieces are missing, the same is true. And yeah. uh, I think we've got a good a good collaboration of all three of those parts that are all working together. And there's obviously kinks in the road, but I think yeah. from from an outsider's perspective, but also someone that just plays on the stage, it's been so exciting to, to be a part of this and to know it's a local thing and to yeah. know that everyone in the room, especially you, 
actually are as excited to be here as everyone else. Yeah. Because if you got a face like a smacked ass, it's really <laughs> so hard for no. it's so hard for us to have a good time if we play a yeah. bum note and everyone thinks it's funny mm. and you're like, F- f- yeah, nah. Learn your uh, look, songs. Like, nah, we, yeah, yeah, we're so not like that at all. We're just we're all about having a good time and creating that space and and I just love that we're starting to get locals and um, regulars now and we're starting to build relationships with you know certain people that come often and and it's just it's such such a good vibe man like I've never been so happy to come to work ever in my entire life exactly and that's the goal <laughs> everyone says you know when when you enjoy your job that much you don't work yeah. it out in your life and yeah that's not true because this is hard work it's yeah, hard work yeah. and I don't do yeah, that for I, a second I, I wish I wish my feet didn't hurt so much yes yeah, no, that I'd, t- I'd change that bit but yes other than yes that. but um <laughs> what are, for, for you maybe more skip way back how did music sort of start for you? What was your introduction to music as, um, as a kid? Yeah, probably five years old getting piano lessons. So I did went up to like eighth grade, I think, classical. Oh, wow, that's um, really good. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was doing like piano competitions and all that sort of stuff. And um, But, yeah, then, you know, you get to a teenager and it was like a bit of a drag. I didn't want to – you know, I wanted to be cool and – play rock stuff, you know, rock music and I didn't want to play classical and so I really wish I'd stuck with it more. But um, I've been able to utilise that in the handpan and writing my own songs, which is just for a hobby now I do that, but not that I actually have any time for that anymore. <laughs> exactly, yeah, in all, in all your free <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, so since the venue's been going, I haven't actually written anything or recorded anything at home, but um, I used to do that all the time, like, yeah, so it's, you know, and the kid's dad um, was heavily involved in music, um, and yeah, then Cherry herself was playing music through school. So, and yeah, my family have always been um, big on music. My stepfather, he was an absolute lover of jazz. He passed away in February and last February, and um, we dedicated our first jazz night last month to him, which That's was special. that was really awesome um, because I know he would have loved it so much. And because um, he used to run a, a jazz group in Noosa, like a a oh. listeners group and they'd come, sort of like a book club but it was like a jazz club that's super cool yeah, yeah. and he did that for years and he was actually um born blind so music for him was everything everything yeah, yeah. so yeah wow so. that's see that that adds a whole other layer to it as well like uh for me i have always had this this relationship i was chatting to, to penny from yellow the other day about this about mum and dad and, and their role and how uh you're talking about and we were talking about the the people make the vibe make the community and stuff like that and somewhere along the line, people have gotten confused that a certain age bracket thinks or does a certain thing or acts a certain way. And I like that we reset that whenever we come in here, you have, you know, people from all, you know, age, genders and creeds mm. come in for regardless of the genre. The genre is obviously different, but that's like the least important part. Everyone's doing their own thing. Yeah. And, you know, mum and dad are catching up with all the friends they haven't seen since I moved out. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm... I'm going to play a bit, but if you guys are happy to catch up, then <laughs> yeah. I'll just play a couple of songs, you know. And for me, I just like that we have somewhere that's intimate, that's cool, that we can do that. And yeah. and building that community is is the best because as Jessica yeah. always says at Selling Space shows, it's not a competition, it's a community. Yeah, and, he's so right. And he is so right because yeah. that's what makes it or breaks it. Yeah, um, 100%. Sure. It is so much about community and being in touch with – Yeah, and you're right. I love the fact that you can look out and there's just such a diverse range of human beings in this space. Like, and everyone just gets along. Like, there's an element of, okay, people know that this space is, uh, it's a local space and you're going to see someone who's in the room, you're going to see them. It's not like, Mm. oh my God, were you there the other night? I had no idea you were even there. It's like, obviously, you would know. Yeah. So therefore, you're bumping into someone you didn't know before and you're enjoying it up the front with someone you didn't know. And, being at the back, which is now more the rear to the right, yeah. I am I'm sort of watching. I'm watching how everyone at the front engages and I don't really get a turn. And yeah. a lot of people always said to me that, um, oh, you must not play the drums because you get to be at the back. You get to be yeah. the back because that's easier. I would happily play drums at the front. I quite like being at the front and seeing what everyone's yeah. doing and interacting, but I've got to sit down. That's just, yeah. that's just my gig, yeah. which is fine. But uh, I, I like that I get to be a little bit more involved, I think, yeah. um, in this sort of space and – and the sort of people yeah. I play with, we appreciate this sort of stuff because I, you wouldn't be sustainable if I was in sort of arrangements I've been in the past where they're like, uh, what do you mean there's no this, there's no that? Oh, wow, weird shape, you know. Yeah. I, th- that just isn't sustainable. And I, I, don't, I can't deal with that negativity anymore. And I mm. like that, um, that 
this is going in a positive direction and everyone's yeah. having a good time. And we were chatting in a, in a group chat just yesterday about doing some new, you know, house band stuff yes. and, and trying some different, different things. I suppose I want to ask, what is your, what would be your ideal like dream artist to have, to have, to have play here, you know, someone oh, that, uh, a yes. dream night, put me a bill together. Okay. Do you mean like on a, um, a higher level of like famous or do you mean like more local or? Whatever. I was going to say dead or alive. And then I was like, that may, okay. that may make it even trickier for you, for okay. you. But like, what would you put in as like a, a dream lineup? Someone that you could be like, yeah, they played here. And I think I would die super happy if Safia played here. Yep. Like 100% because Safia is a band that Cherry and I have followed right from the start when they were playing, like they were so young and like nervous and anxious and we saw them at, do you remember the old Pig and Whistle down at the plaza or was that Oh, before? yeah, yeah. Uh, I do uh, remember that. It but... um, I think it was before it was even, was it the Helm? No, I can't. Uh, the Helm was in Woolbar, that was before yeah, my time. Yeah, so no, it wasn't the Helm. I forget what it was called upstairs there, but anyway, it was a cool club and um, we went down there to see them. This is like over 10 years ago and he had this big floppy hat on and he had his back to the audience like Jim Morrison because he was so nervous and now he's like running up in stadiums jumping off speakers and stuff and I just freaking love that band like their musical ability is just so awesome and if they were ever on the Sunshine Coast, I would think, please, please come please say hi. Me. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think one of the magic moments that we did have here, and it was quite funny, um, Tom Thumb was here. Yep. And I had no idea who he was. <laughs> so this dude's come in and um, there was, was some hip hop stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, cool <laughs> so man. He came in and they were setting up and I just thought he was some rapper dude, you know, and he was walking around humming this little thing and I was like oh this guy's a bit strange like he's humming this thing and then I had to go to the shop to get something and I could hear the hum and he was walking down the main street in Nambour doing this weird hum thing and I was like man this is so odd anyway I came back in and um Harlem was here he's yeah. a local rapper yeah he's he's, he's yeah. awesome we love I, talk, him. I could talk about him for hours oh we love him he's, he's adorable and um he was here and I was like who is that guy like he keeps humming this thing like it's kind of like your nana doing the washing but it's like I don't know it's so weird and he goes dude don't you know who that is and I'm like no nah. and then he's told me and he's like oh you know he's done stuff with hilltop hoods yeah, so like, is he humming a hilltop and, hood and song I was like, like oh okay um cool like you know anyway he gets up to do his thing later and I was I was sitting at I came to get a glass off one of my friends who was sitting in the middle of the room I just started crying like I was literally Tears streaming down my face. This guy was making, I can't even describe it. You'd have, you'd have to, if you, if you haven't seen him, go check him out. But he was making like the sounds of, say, monks on a cliff top. And then he was going to, and this is what a New York jazz bar sounds like. And then he was with his voice, like his, in, yeah, and cool. like I, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. And I turned to my friend and I said, yep, I can die happy now. Yeah. That's, that this, this that moment special. right here, right now, like I, this calibre of, talent and you know what it, it just it, with the precinct it just keeps going like that like okay yes that was Tom Thumb but even just the local dudes that come in here and play the the level of talent that we're having through the doors is just nuts and I, I just feel so stoked to be a part of it and I just feel like you know those documentaries that you see of like clubs and stuff that happen way back you know I feel like when we're all really old, we're going to be talking about the precinct like that. Remember when the precinct, like there's so much birthing out of this space right now that it's, it's just so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and like everyone talks about, you know, were you in the ground floor when, um, when the Beatles were playing in hole, yeah. holes in the wall in Liverpool? And then now I'm thinking, it for, as, as you just suggesting, thinking it from more from, did you think about that pub in Liverpool? That they had the Beatles? It's yeah, like, yeah. yes, I'm sure. Were you there at the gig watching them, not knowing they were going to be whatever? Yeah. But did you think about how that bar owner's thinking, wow, the Beatles <laughs> yeah, played here? Exactly. These were just a couple of guys, guys yeah. with funny accents, which yeah. weren't funny because that's how we all spoke. But yeah. like, what? And yeah. that's what I, I, I feel that too. I'm like, it's crazy when I see people come through and you know, people like Tom Thumb coming through and yeah, going, yeah. oh, this is, I'm going to do my thing. Not yeah. like... Wow, that's cr- a bunch of yeah. people don't know who I am here, but I'm going to remind them all. I'm actually a big deal. Yeah, he was happy to just he be here because so he wanted to be here. Humble, honestly, the most humble dude I think I've ever met in my entire life. Went up to him at the end. I just said, "Thank you so much." Like that was an experience. Or, yeah, it literally was. And people in the room were just mind blown. You know, they were like, they hadn't seen anything like it. So 
But yeah, I know what you mean. It's like it's like last weekend Daniel Salmon from Catching Salmon got me to do his hair and all these weird little hairstyles, and oh I'm my like, God, what? <laughs> he said he said I got so many DMs of people saying, "Did you cut your hair off? Rusty's lost it. She's she's she's, she's gone too far." It did. Hey, it looked like I, I was shaving his head, but like one day, you know, they're gonna be huge, and I'll be like. I did that dude's hair. Yep. I did that hair because he asked for some reason. Yeah. yeah. And then and it was really funny because Cherry, he came up to the bar and Cherry looked at it and went, my mother did that. Because <laughs> she did that to my hair when I was <laughs> Yes, I too have been in grade six before. Uh, I don't want to date this, but mm. I know there's lots of exciting things coming up. What are you most excited for? I know you said you were sort of letting things not go, but letting things go in the natural path it mm. wants to go into, which is like the most rare thing ever. Yeah. Rather than... You know, let me hold, we, the, hold the baby till it chokes on the yeah. You're very much saying, well, I think if the people want X, yeah. let's do X. We are we are trying to structure a few things now because I think it's going to make it easier for people. So my brother has a website company. We're working on a website um, where people can sub- sub- ugh, can't even say it, subscribe mm-hmm. to the genre that they're most yeah. interested in. So, um, for example, we're going to have like bass music um, the last Saturday of every second month and then – on the alternate, it'll be a hip hop Aussie hip hop night, and then we're going to do the same with other genres. Like try and pick sort of a regular, so people can go. Oh yeah, I know on these dates, and then when the website's up and running, they can click on there and go. Oh yeah, I can get the babysitter for that, or I can you know make sure that I've got nothing booked on that date because that's happening. And then the Nambour Twilight Markets are now every second Friday night. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're super excited about what that's going to do for Nambour. Um, the first one was so good like the food trucks were amazing and I just really hope that people will support that to keep it going and for sure yeah um so we're going to sort of try and uh work in conjunction with that so the next one which is coming up we're going to be doing like a free event for Mm -hmm. people which is all an ode to the new wave um 80s yeah cool 80s and themes so if people want to dress up they can um that's pretty exciting so I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes in that respect that Having a little bit of structure might help, but then also, you know, having some random things like the other night when I spoke to the boys and they're like, yeah, let's put this night together. And yeah. it just, it was just so organic and it went off so well. Yeah, I've been saying that to, to John and Caleb because obviously Caleb and I love playing here and we do with many different ensembles and talking about putting your stuff together. And I suppose for us, it's exciting to, uh, as people that I know haven't, have never been on the inner of the click. Uh, I should I should play a treehouse song over that whilst I say click, <laughs> but to, to know that we have a space that we can say, hey, we'd like to put this through and we've got all the bills sorted and stuff yep. and you not to be like, yeah, well, my e- emails are always open. I'll get back to you in you know, a little while yeah, when nah. I get a chance. It's like, oh, you're keen. Let, how can I make it work? Yeah. And I think that's a big thing as, as a venue owner, as a sound tech, as a musician, Attitude makes or break makes or breaks the entire operation, yeah. and from the word go, I it was a great one. It was a great yeah. attitude from all parties, and that's only sort of grown. Yeah. And uh, I think as as things open up, and as you know, the the people that are teetering on that seventeen then become eighteen yeah. year old, then they get to be open up to new things like that. Exactly, so yeah, it's it's a uh, it's never ending in the fact that there's always going to be a new wave of things happening, yeah. and new people who are excited to try different things. And absolutely, and I think the super band idea, or I don't know if that's what we're going to go call it, but you know, we've been talking about the once a month on a Thursday night um getting like all the bands together to just sort of have a jam and and mix and match and because we that's sort of what happened organically on Friday night is um we had spare time and I was like we'll just get up and jam guys like you know it was I think it was 10 o'clock and we could stay up until midnight oh we don't have another band I'm like we'll just jam and then everyone just started getting up and from each band just jamming and and it was just amazing and then I was like sitting there thinking we need to do this more often like and then I think it might give bands an opportunity that aren't well known yet or maybe they've just started out and they might idolise you guys a little bit or Treehouse a little bit or, you know, Pity Vincent, whoever, and, and they're like, oh, they, they might be there, let's go along. And then if we have like a bit of an open mic section where we can – I've got to sit down obviously with everybody and, and try and plan this out properly, but I just think it would be a really great way for – people to connect with the bands that they like so it can sort of become like a bit of a mentoring thing as well yeah and like have a house band so you can be like oh i've never really played before yeah Uh, but is it okay if we get up yes it absolutely is and i think that like i'm i'm in the process of and it will come out after this one but 
it's a process of essentially doing a big presentation on stage fright, which was something that I had a bit of a relationship with starting out as a tennis player with a, a coach with a gravelly voice. And I used to just bore my eyes out after every, oh, after wow. every tennis lesson. I was saying, I'm having the best time, mum. And mum's like, your face is telling me something different. <laughs> and it was just because I never been exposed to that. He had to yeah. yell. It's 20 meters of court. He had to yeah. yell, but I just assumed I was in trouble all the time. And then that went into me being really shy in kindergarten, really shy in primary school. And then yeah. progressively I, I learned and understood that there's you know certain things that I can do to improve that and things that are in my control and not in my control. But getting play time, be it in, in a live setting, anything like that, or yeah. just with other people because you're never used to doing it yeah. by yourself. It's so it different is, to just doing it at home. Exactly, eh? and it yeah. is so there, – there is no negative byproduct to that. Yeah. And you were saying before when you – Saw everyone at joy at their joyous faces, like Connor's um, mug when he was you know, yeah, smiling was so out of the crowd. So great on Friday night. Uh, yeah. It literally has no negative byproduct. Yeah. Like being able to laugh and yeah. do those things, they give you all the good stuff without yeah. any of the negativity. And absolutely, yeah. That that whole dopamine hit and stuff that you get from all those things. Mm. Any way we can sort of take that nervousness that stage fright that fear from someone who's oh, i've never really done this before yeah and be like oh guess what i had such a fun experience i played with these guys i can't remember all of their names but i played yeah. with these guys on stage and it was super fun yeah. and we played something we played like a killer song that i haven't played outside of my room it was really exciting yeah, yeah. cool yeah. awesome yeah i think i think that's going to be a really fun night that because yeah it is and i think covid has actually affected people a lot in that respect too that it has brought on a lot of anxieties and especially with um you know that early 20 year old group that um were still in the end of high school during covid and they didn't get to go out and they, do they've never been out exactly they've literally, yeah. and that's yeah. i think what, what we forget they never went out no yeah. they, they weren't stopped from going out they never had it in the yeah. first place they became of age yeah when you had to be locked inside exactly. so i've i've been guilty of forgetting that being like, yeah. geez, it's pretty weird that you don't, yeah, you don't know what the vibes like. It's pretty good when you go out, okay. Yeah. And it? and it, it it does bring a lot of anxiety. Like I see it with the like I've got patrons that have actually said to me, because I'm usually on the door, and they've come in and they've actually said to me, oh, there's there's a lot of people here. I'm I'm feeling a bit anxious, and then. I'll go, hey, look, I'm going to come and introduce you to this person because there'll be someone here that's a regular and I'll go, come and meet this person. And then at the end of the night, you see they're like best mates. And it that's one thing that I do love doing is connecting people and seeing friendships form. And that's one of my goals with the precinct is that it does become a place where friendships are formed and built and, and sustain. And, you know... It, I think people do struggle to make new friends because it's like, you know, when you're a kid, you go to the beach and like you'll be building a sandcastle and you see another kid and you're like, hey, do you want to, you know, and you just... I like sandcastles. You're building a sandcastle. We're now best friends. But then suddenly you get to an age where you can't do that anymore. Yeah. And that just connection (laughs) just disappears. It's like, oh, you're listening to music. I like this music. Yeah. I will share that thought mutual exclusive and never share it with you. Yeah. So I like to be that person that kind of can help Bridges that. do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that, that's one of the things that I do enjoy doing, and and I am guilty of doing it a lot. So when you come to the precinct, I will possibly you like, you <laughs> will make a new friend, and yeah. that is fifty yeah, percent negotiable. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't come with a friend, you're leaving with a friend. Leaving everyone, with a friend. That's, yep. put that on the door of the precinct. If you don't come with a friend, you'll leave with, leave a, with friend, a friend. Yeah, respectfully. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. So that, that's yeah. fantastic. Well. Yeah. Um, I just just finished. I wanted. I want you to share everything that you've I don't know, got going on and stuff like that. But like, where where can everyone find things? Uh, like yeah. the precinct. G- give it a give it a nice big pitch so that I can use it as okay. a. Okay. So well, nice I mean, at the moment, tool. I've been really slack with the whole website thing. Um, it is coming, but mm-hmm. obviously, Facebook and Instagram are the main things. Probably Facebook because I'm a bit old. Um, Facebook is where I tend to post most things, but I am trying to learn with Instagram and Reels and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I do use Locals in the Loop. I don't yep. know if you've heard of that. Um, Larissa there, she's amazing and she has a website. So people that don't use socials can jump on Locals in the Loop. They can put in the precinct and see what we've got happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but probably if you don't have socials, the best thing would be just to join us on Humanitix because we only use Humanitix for our ticket links because they do donate to charity. So, so you will get those those email blasts yeah. for everything. Yeah, 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 it'll, yeah, yeah, it'll show you. And yeah, so you can see what we've got up that's um, current, I guess, yeah. So if and if you're in the Nambour area, you gotta pop pop in. <laughs> any, any day of the weekend, uh, there, there'll be there's guaranteed to be something going on, yeah. and it's it's really exciting to be a part of this as an artist and to know that I've got somewhere exciting to play whenever you know things come up pretty regularly, and and yeah. it's super exciting to have Rusty in my corner as well. And you will see me back here 
without Rusty um, later on in the season, just showcasing how um, fantastic she is at, at supporting things. Um, and uh, it's, it was good to finally get a chance to have a conversation with you where I didn't have to raise my voice. We neither of us had to raise our voice, <laughs> um, which is nice. No hoarse throats after this. Yeah, true. Um, and uh, yeah, it's fun to sit on the, sit on the stage yeah. and, and, and sort of have a chat about this special place we're in. So make sure you um, send me everything that, that I can to, to share, especially some befores. Oh, yes. Definitely some I've befores got, definitely got some of, of some empty rooms and for some sure. you know, rocked walls um, yep. to, to what it is now. So, I'll do um, that for sure. Exa- well, thank you for joining me. Yeah, and thanks uh, for having me. It was, it was a fun. pleasure. It was. So <laughs> as always, guys, you know what to do. They're coming out on Tuesday, every episode, every week. You know where to find this. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere now. As of season four, it's everywhere Catch up and contribute and check out any of the other preview episodes you might have missed in previous seasons. And until next time, I'll see you later.